what I always tell my sister. Like, if you have any, like, beef with people, don't. It's a it's a Hey, I think we will get started. Um, we're going to start by um, introducing ourselves, and then we're going to ask you to introduce yourselves in the chat in just a moment. So um, I am Lindsay Holm, and I'm the executive director at Up for Learning, and we're really glad that you joined us today for this Lunch and Learn. Um, I'll talk more in a little bit about um, what we're going to do today in this short hour and my why, but I'm going to pass it over to my co-facilitators and I will start with Anna and then Anna you can pass it to Adriana and Adriana will pass it to Aishma and then we can put a question in the chat for everyone. Sound good? Awesome. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, welcome. My name is Anna. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a youth program specialist with Up for Learning um, and currently a rising sophomore at Boston University, um, but I'm from Vermont, Plainfield, Vermont. Um, and 
for me, my why for, restorative practices and youth little partnership personally um just like learning about both restorative practices and youth little partnership have been integral to like and, and sharing that learning with other people have been integral to just like my growth as a person um but like fundamentally and like at the most basic level um including everyone at the table and creating a space where everyone voices or everyone's voices are going to be valued um just seems very necessary um so i'll pass it over to adriana to introduce herself Hi everyone, my name is Adriana. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I work as a youth intern with Up for Learning. And I think my why around restorative practices and youth adult partnership is really centered around the school and learning experience as well as the community um, in schools. And I think that using these practices make it a more enjoyable place for everyone to be and a place where learning can be fun and it's productive. Um, and it makes everyone feel good. I'll pass it over to Aishma. Aishma, you're still muted. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. Um, I'm Aishma. Hello. I use she her pronouns, and I go to South Brenton High School. Uh, I'm an internet for learning, and I think my why for restorative practices and youth and adult partnership is probably, it's really important to have youth and adult partnership for me uh, personally. And I think it's important to incorporate restorative practices in that just so that it's a comfortable and safe space for everyone. And it's um, a space where everyone feels comfortable enough to share their uh, voice. Thanks. So now we'd like you all to introduce yourselves and you can put it in the chat. Um, and if you feel comfortable sharing who you are, your pronouns, your role, and what weather are you showing up as today? And I can model that for you. Again, my name is Lindsay Hallman. My pronouns are she, her. I'm the executive director at Up For Learning, but also uh, a lead, a member of the team at the Vermont Restorative Approaches Collaborative. And I'm showing up really sunny today. Um, one for two reasons. One, because it really actually is very sunny here in Vermont today for once. And two, because I'm really excited to be sharing the space with you all. So I'm showing up excited um, and curious. And feel free to drop that in the chat. And maybe if one of uh, my co-facilitators could also just drop the question in the chat or share your weather as well. I know everyone can see the question. So we'd love to hear who people are and how you're showing up. Wow. We've got some partly cloudy weather from Chantal. We've got Santa Fe, New Mexico. Welcome, Jake. Christy's showing up sunny and bright. Jesse's showing up from the UK. Wonderful. Yes, I totally see how gray and rainy weather can affect how you're showing up. I'm glad that people are feeling pretty sunny today and that there's people from all over here. Um, wonderful, and you can keep adding to that the chat as well. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be almost 100 in Chicago. Okay, well we've got, it looks like we've got New Mexico, Chicago, we've got Delaware, we've got Vermont, we've got the UK. Did I miss any other states here? We've got a lot of representation here. So thank you all for being here. Before we get, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see everyone. Hopefully that works. Here we go. 
Before we get into our um, activities for today, I just wanted to share a little background around um, why we're here today and where a lot of this work comes from. And so um, in 2019, I'll start there because the story begins much before then, but in 2019, um, with support from the Vermont Agency of Education, a group of folks in Vermont who were already practitioners and um, facilitators around restorative practices, restorative justice, came together um, to establish a group called the Vermont Restorative Practice Collaborative, Vermont Restorative Approaches Collaborative, VTRAC. And the goal was to bring all the people that are doing this work throughout the state together um, so that we could learn from one another, share resources, and have a much more coordinated effort in supporting the schools in Vermont to um, infuse restorative approaches, practices, justice into their school. Um, that uh, support from the Agency of Education was followed up with some continued support in 2021, 2022. Um, in the in-between time, the Vermont Restorative Approaches Collaborative, which is led by um, our organization Up for Learning in collaboration with the University of Vermont, we continued to meet as practitioners, educators, youth, community justice center uh, folks um, to continue learning from one another. And in this last round of support from the Agency of Education, we felt like we really wanted to provide some resources and tools that could be used whether or not there is a state agency funding um, this project uh, or this group. And so what we'll share with you today, we're gonna go through the why, what, and how around restorative approaches, restorative practices in schools and in education um, and how it can be applied to your role in your organization or in your school. And um, but we're also going to share some resources with you that are available for you to use and share widely with your peers and colleagues. So that is the background there. And we're actually doing amazing on time. I can't even believe it. So Adriana, I'm going to toss it to you. We're going to start with the why and I'll get the slides up while you begin the introduction. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, so to kick off, as Lindsay kind of said, um, this is about restorative practices. And so if you're new to restorative practices or not, um, we're going to explore some of the core assumptions aligned with restorative practices. So um, it requires kind of a shift in a lot of our mindsets, especially centered around like schools or other places of work. Um, and this activity helps us to look at the why that supports restorative approaches in schools or wherever you're centered. Um, this why is backed by a lot of brain research, um, which is really cool to explore and to kind of connect. And when practicing these approaches, um, these assumptions that we're gonna look at in just a second are super important to understand. I hope that you enjoyed uh, exploring this today. And it looks like Lindsay has popped the link in chat and she can explain a little bit more about the logistics of how we're Thanks, Adriana. Yes, so um, what we have put together here is, if you've never used a Jamboard before, no worries, we're gonna lead you through it. Um, just as Adriana explained, you're gonna see a lot of the, the why behind restorative approaches, the core assumptions that's grounded in brain research and um, supports why these are so important to think about and implement within our schools and organizations. And we're gonna give you time to um, go through the Jamboard at your own pace. We'll give you a little bit of time because we don't have a ton of time here today, but about five minutes or so to read through. There's three slides. So if you go up to the top here, you'll see there's a place to switch the page. Oops, and I'm in the last one. So there's three that have um, these different, what we're calling core assumptions. Um, for example, it's important to connect and relate to others from a place of mutual respect. So you'll read through all of these. There's um, three boards, like we said, and we want you to think about after you've gone through them, prioritizing, even though they're all really important, what might be the top three assumptions or ideas um, behind restorative approaches, restorative practices that really resonate with you, that are sticking out to you as far as your why. 
Um, so right now, you're in, I'm going to put on some music. You'll have about five minutes or so to read through these different slides. Again, you can adjust it by going to the next frame up here. And then I didn't explain the really important part, but you can grab a star. You all have editing access. You can grab a star and let's say relational approaches take time is a really important piece for you that really sticks out as to um, one of the 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 whys for you, you would drag it right over to that box. Um, so there should be enough stars for everyone to grab three for your top three and we can always make more if there isn't so what questions do you all have. You can feel free to ask us in the chat or ask aloud. And if there are none, feel free to direct message any of your facilitators. If there are none, we're gonna give you a few minutes right now to read through those. And I'll put on some music so that you can jam board and read through the different assumptions, thinking about your why, what stands out to you. <laughs> Take just about one more moment to make sure you've had a chance to read through each of the three slides and place a star on your top three that are really sticking sticking out to you or calling out to you right now.
we are now going to take some time to look through the slides and notice which core assumptions are being starred the most. Um, and what do you notice as like a top assumption? Um, you can share out either popcorn it out by unmuting or you can share in the chat um, something that you notice is a top assumption. I'm noticing um, there's a lot of stars on behavior is communication. Bad behavior is a signal of discomfort, distress, and a dysregulated nervous system. And I think that's an important one to keep in mind, um, whether we're in schools or in our community or organizations that, that this idea of bad behavior is so, connected to our nervous system and um, whether it is regulated or dysregulated at that particular moment. I'm seeing Jesse said it seems like most of the assumptions on page one feel very relevant and important. And I wonder if anybody wants to speak to any other ones that they may be starred. How about my I know personally. Oh yeah, go for oh. it. I'm just gonna say uh, personally. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I start. Um, the human brain becomes distressed in the face of unpredictability, restraint, and isolation. And I thought that was an important one to note, at least for me. Seeing that, like in schools, um, kids may not show it, but it has a very big emotional impact, and, and it impacts your brain and how you act when. Um, we're punished with things such as like isolation or you're not sure what's going to happen. Um, so I thought that was one that I would start. Anna or Ayushma, anything coming up for either of you? something you notice or does anybody else want to highlight anything? I think one that um, stuck out to me was um, on the third page, empathy in response to challenging behavior supports growth rather than enabling it. Um, and I think that also connects to like the other two that we've that have been mentioned the idea that like so often in schools we see like bad behavior challenging students um and you know it results in like some sort of like punitive discipline system where they're like taken out of you're ta they're taken away from their peers or um they're responded to you know in like not a very empathetic way and so just like how common that practice is um and how how much it makes sense to kind of shift that because that seems to be like a common theme that's popping up throughout all the ones that we've heard mentioned. Um, I think something that's sticking out for me is the uh, on the first page, the one that says everyone is um innately good and capable of change. Um, I feel like sometimes when there's like a student that's known for like being, um, I guess more talkative during class or you know like a student that's known for that it's it's like they're known for only that thing and like some teachers don't really take into account of like what could be causing them to keep repeating the same like um behaviors instead of thinking like the, um 
how can we like support them they're like they're just like that they just act like that all the time it's fine kind of thing so that kind of stuck out to me thank you all for sharing thank you all for sharing I see some stars still moving. Stars which is still. Well, we're going to move along um, unless anyone else wants to share anything around this activity, but it's really important to be grounded in um, both the why and also um, the what. And that's what we're going to be getting to next of like, what could this look like? Or what does it take to really build a system where restorative approaches, restorative practices are um, infuse into the system. So let me see if I can adjust here and get our slides uh, ready for the next one. And then I'll, I think I'm on introduction. So um, the next activity that we're going to do together is um, we're going to have the opportunity to explore some universal strategies. Um, and structures that create the foundational parts of restorative approaches, whether it's in a, mo we're speaking mostly to educational systems, but it could be within organizational systems as well. So you're gonna actually in this next activity, make a copy of a Jamboard and we'll lead you through that. Um, and um, because you're gonna do this on, on your own, you're gonna be thinking about your own school, or your own organization, and it's not an evaluation, it's just a place to start to think about where you are currently, what are the strengths, what are we lifting up as strengths of our school or organization, um, what could we do better that we are currently working on, and then what are we currently not doing, because that might be a place to think aspirationally around your goals for your school or organization. Um, and this is a personal assessment tool, so it's not something that we're going to be sharing like we just did with the stars, we're going to actually lead you through how to create um, your own Jamboard. So let's see if we've got, um, thank you, Aishma. Is that the next Jamboard there? Thank you so much. Um, so this activity that Aishma just shared in the chat, I will show you how to make a copy if you've never Jamboarded before. You are going to, um, go to these three little dots up here in the right next to where it says share. And then you just say, make a copy. Once you've made a copy, you won't be able to edit this one. Um, you don't have editing rights, but you have, you'll be able to make a copy. Once you make a copy, you'll be able to edit away. And you can use this um, with your peers, with your colleagues to think about your own um, school or organization. But for right now, we're gonna give you five minutes. Again, we'll put on some nice quiet music. And you're gonna be thinking about um, all these different sticky notes. They're all over, they're not placed necessarily where they should be, but um, you're gonna look at each of them. You might have to zoom in a little bit um, if your eyes are like mine. And you're gonna think about them. Okay, so this one says, administration has attended restorative practice training. Oops, Aishma, I'm taking your job. I'm passing it over to you. <laughs> I was just supposed to do the introduction, right? It's all right. You gotta slow me down. You go. You explain. You know how to do this better than me. <laughs> um. So basically, you, uh, you may um. So we're gonna be reading over each of the sticky notes. I think you might be able to read it better if you click on it. Are you able to double tap in? Yeah, you can read it that way, which may be easier. Um, and then just move the sticky note where your you feel like um your school experiences. So um. So you might, uh, so like, you might think in a certain this stick, you know, um, you f might feel like your school experience is doing really good in that aspect, or maybe you're still, you could improve or like do better, or you're not doing um this at all currently. That's like the three um tables you can put them in. Awesome. Great. And if you have any questions, let us know in the chat or you can unmute. And again, you're going to need to make a copy of it right here. And we're going to give you about five minutes or so to do this sorting activity. Um, I'm going to take the share screen down. 
Um, and if you need any assistance, let us know, but we'll put on some quiet music. And then when we come back, we're gonna um, uh, get into some just small uh, breakout groups or some uh, just to share kind of what where you're thinking expanded in this activity. So um, just so you know where you're going and we'll see you in a few minutes here. Thank you. 
Okay, recognizing that's a lot to read through and maybe you didn't get through all of it, but that's there for you as an assessment tool. You can use at any point with your colleagues, continue looking at on your own. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Anna for our next, our next steps. Thank you. Um, so hopefully that was helpful and it allowed you to think about restorative practices in your own schools or organizations in different ways. Um, we are now going to um, move you into breakout rooms. So we're going to have two breakout rooms, each with four people in them. Um, we're going to give you about five minutes um, and we're going to ask you to think about the questions. Oops, hold on. I'm going to put them in the chat. Um, what stood out to you from this activity? Um, and then what was new to you or what expanded your thinking about restorative practices while doing this. Um, and so because there are about four people, five minutes, we're going to ask that everyone take like about each about one minute, maybe a little bit more um, and try to ensure that like we're sharing the air and everyone in the breakout room gets to share um, for, you know, around the same time. Um, are there any questions before we send you into the room? And then we'll give you like a 30 minute, uh, sorry, a 30 second warning before we bring you back. I really um, should like direct message you the questions and I was like that's not gonna work I can't even tell what's a direct message now and what's not it doesn't like show remember you like I think did Christy when Christy sent a message did you all see it about taking a picture or is that just to me must have been just, just to you okay all right because I'm like I can't tell um I always think it's hilarious too like as soon as you say like breakout groups like people leave the zoo <laughs> I just figured I'd give you a little advance warning, but um, what a, uh, yeah, there's um, a lot of people here from all over. I should probably pause. No. I'm going to pause the room. Just waiting for our other breakout group to come back. Here they come. Yeah. Thanks. Welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone um, in the group's got a chance to share. Um, is there any? Are there any like highlights or you know big takeaways that either of the anyone from either of the groups wanted to share with the group? If not, you all are also welcome to add them in the chat. Um, but for the sake of time, we're going to move on to our next activity. Um, so this is this is an activity that we call Why Matter? Uh, sorry, I Matter. Um, and it's really getting at the connection between youth adult partnership and restorative practices. So how are they inter interconnected? How do they work with each other? How do they supplement each other? Um, and so it's really based on the you know normal human desire to really feel like that they that we're valued um, and that we matter. Um, it doesn't matter like where you're coming from, what age you are, whether you work in a school or an organization or you're a student. Um, the desire to you know feel like your voice is heard and that people are listening to you is universal. Um, and that's really at the essence of like why youth at all partnership is so um, essential and needed. Um, so this is activity we do often, so I'm going to pass it over to Adriana to explain. All right, thank you, Anna. So we're going to start by thinking of a time when a decision was being made that would directly impact you, but you were not asked for input. You know, maybe you knew you had something, some important information to share about this decision, but there's no opportunity for you to contribute. Um, and you knew this would result in an action that would be 
that was being done to or for you, but definitely not with you. So spend a minute or so. You can just think about it or you can write down some notes if you'd like about a time that maybe this has happened to you, recalling it as vividly as you can. And once you've kind of brought back that situation to life in your mind, um, recall some of the feelings that this situation may have made you feel um, or maybe some of the resulting feelings, the resulting effect, how that made you feel in the end. And then um, just keep those in your mind. When you feel like you're able to describe that feeling, you can pop a feeling word in the chat if you would like. Um, you can also take another minute and add to it whenever you'd like. Yeah, I'm seeing frustrated. Valued, hurt, helpless or confused, ignored, angry, mm, yeah, powerless or silenced. Cool. So I'm going to hand it over to Aishma to then kind of think of some of the flip sides of this. Right. Uh, now I'm going to have you think about a time in your head when some decision was being made that would directly impact you. But this time uh, they ask for your input. Your input is actively solicited. Uh, you knew you had important information to contribute to this discussion. You knew this would result in an action that was being done with you instead of just to or for you. So spend a few minutes either writing it down on a piece of paper or thinking about it in your head about this incident in, um, yeah, and how that made you feel that it was being done with you this time. Um, when you have brought it, um, when you have brought this feeling, how it made you feel back to life as much as possible in your memory, um, recall the feelings that this situation provoked for you. And I'm just going to share a, a Mentimeter. And if you could put a few words that describe how this made you felt into it, that'd be awesome.
and then you can just put um the words that describe how you this made you felt into the entire word sections. You put as many words as you want. If you do three, you could do it again too. I'm going to share my screen. Sorry, my computer's moving kind of slow. So let me share my screen so you can see what's happening on this word cloud. seeing a lot of valued, empowered, heard. Clearly those words are being amplified, honored, grateful, recognized, relevant, inspired, engaged, appreciated, happy. Anna, can I toss it back to you for yeah. a little summary of this? Yeah. Um, so all of this, like all of these words that we've generated together here is really at the heart of why restorative practices and youth little partnership are so important. Um, so like when we all go back to our own schools or organizations, um, we're really trying to create spaces where these words are being fostered. Um, and, and if you all didn't know for the Mentimeter, like the bigger that the words show up, the more often that they've been put in. So we know that like collectively feeling valued and empowered and engaged, those have been put in multiple times. And so those are really the feelings that we are trying to create together in the space. Um, and those spaces are really what allow people to like live up to their full potential um, and really feel valued as members of a community. And that's what restorative practices and youth little partnership are doing for people. Thanks, Hannah. We'll make sure also to uh, send that word cloud out to you as well, just as a reminder when we send you out some follow up materials. Um, and so as we're approaching the end of our hour together, we really appreciate the fact that you made this time today to be here with us. Um, we just wanted to share out some resources that might help you and your colleagues and your peers with furthering your learning and journey with restorative practices and approaches. Um, we've uh, created a resource page on our website, I'm going to pop this in the chat, that links to a number of um, really helpful resources that were created um, by the Vermont Restorative Approaches Collaborative. Um, and one of those is, I'll show you real quickly here. Um, share screen. One of those is um, when you get to this page, if you scroll down, this gives you some context as the intro that I gave you in the beginning here. Um, there's this learning module, and this is a free resource for anyone It was created through um, this past project with the Agency of Education in Vermont. Um, and when you open up the module, this can be a, a learning tool for you and your colleagues, your peers, it takes you through a lot more of what we just were scratching the surface with today. 
the why, what, and how. Um, it also incorporates uh, some videos of different folks in the school system and in the community talking about their why, what, and how. Likewise, um, to hear more about different stories, there are um, also a series of videos that you can watch. We found that there weren't off, often um, videos of what restorative practices looked like in action in schools. Like we read a lot about it, we heard a lot about it, we talked a lot about it, but what does it actually look like? So there's a whole bunch of videos. There's a lot, um, a lot of resources as well for you all to explore. These are all open free resources and we hope you'll um, use them. And I wanted to leave the last um, just few minutes here. We'll make sure to send you a follow-up email with um, a link with this information, um, these resources and our word cloud. Um, but I wanted to open it up to you all to see if there's any questions for any of us. You can either put it in the chat or unmute. I just want to share that this was an excellent presentation. I appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. Any other questions, wonderings? Feedback is always great too. You can always let us know offline as well or off Zoom. Well, we really appreciate you all being here, no matter what time zone you're in, because I know this is not 12 o'clock for everyone on this Zoom. And um, uh, I see a question here. Is there a program you do with kids that you find most beneficial? Um, at Up for Learning, everything that we do is in partnership with youth. So when we do work in schools around restorative practices, whether it's elementary, middle school, or high school, it's always youth and adults coming together to learn about these practices and then support their school in implementing the practices. And they use um, the youth participatory action research cycle to make sure that they're really addressing the needs of their community. So if you're interested in finding out more, we'd be happy to um, share more information. But the resources that um, are in the chat might also lead you to a number of different um, resources that would be supportive of um, thinking about next steps. Final moment for questions. And we just ask them maybe as you're leaving today, if you could just leave a word or two in the chat about how you're leaving at the end of this session. Uh, we started with the weather. How are you feeling now? What's your weather as you're leaving our time today? And we just thank you for being here. We'll put on some music as you sign off. And thanks for taking the time with us today. Thank you.